Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we dive into this lesson, giving no honor, no glory, no praise due to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Akhatadash. That bond is a great minister and apostle, teacher of will. Peace and salutations to the whole for the elect that scatter abroad, the elect the other nations. Shalom, shalom. And a shalom to the sincere occupants out there making their body and living sacrifice by going out there on the highways, byways, and hedges, by proclaiming this truth and proclaiming this gospel. Shalom. And a shalom to the sir, Akwathi, and when that's out there, refs and their husbands, being a pillar of rest, keep doing so to those that may be. Shalom, shalom. Yahweh, as it being the Heavenly Father, which the world eagerly calls God, which his name means in ancient Paleo Hebrew, he exists. Okay. Bahashim, meaning the name of Yahweh Shai, being an only begotten son, that a Heavenly Father, which the world eagerly calls Jesus the Christ, which his name means in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, he is to exist. Okay. And the Makakadash being the Holy Spirit or Spirit Holy. Okay. So they, today's lesson is basically called, basically going into faith is more powerful than you think. Okay. Because when you think about it, you know, the Lord only asks us to have faith the size of a mustard seed, you know. Now, let's look up how big a mustard seed is. Mustard seed. Okay. Let's look how big a mustard seed is. This is how big a mustard seed is, all right? It's very tiny, okay? It's tiny. And all the Lord asks you to have is the faith of that size of a mustard seed, a faith the size of a mustard seed, okay? That's all you need, okay? Just that little much of faith is very, very important. Because this is what uh, mustard seed turns into, okay? Mustard tree. This is what a mustard tree develops into. From that mustard seed right here, you see it at the top left, okay? That size of faith that you have is way bigger than what you think, okay? Because just this little seed has a bigger background than more than you think so if we just need faith that small there are bigger things happening with us having that kind of faith okay so without further ado let's get the book of hebrews chapter 11 this is the book of hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Now, this is the definition of faith, okay? Faith is, sub is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, okay? We have faith that there is a power within the spiritual realm doing, every, doing his works across this whole planet, okay? We have faith that the Lord created everything that we see, okay? Because that's the faith and the things that we don't see but we know it's there okay because the lord once again can give you signs and wonders and everything to let you know his very existence you know just all looking at nature itself you know you gotta understand that takes faith to believe that something higher up created everything you know and that takes faith to believe that because you got this devil basically trying to debunk the heavenly father's existence okay which we know that these devils don't have no faith at all okay but once again you know the lord shows time and time again who's in control okay and that's why we have that faith okay that um the things we see play out in the world are of the lord okay it's not of ourselves okay it's not because of humanity no the lord is in control of everything man all right. Verse three. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear by faith. Let's read this in a different, NL, different version. NLT. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at Yahweh's command, Yahweh's command, and that we now did that we 
now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Okay. Because the Lord gave you how a shot, the blueprint to create everything we see. Okay. Even though we didn't, we, we don't see those things happening, but at the same time, we have faith that those, that this happened. And then when you read the scriptures and look at the things that happen in the world, the his, history speaks for itself. Okay. You know, like, um, Noah's Ark on top of the Mount of Ariat, okay, which is in Turkey, okay, at top of the mountain in Turkey on Mount Ariat, okay, they found it, okay, it's, 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 it's pictures of it, okay, and we have faith, you know, it, it, that those things that happened back then with the flood, we believe that happened, okay, okay, you got um, the chariot of the Egyptian chariots, under the Red Sea, okay? Because you got to remember, when um, Pharaoh was chasing the Israelites, or chasing us, when he was going through the uh, part of the sea, okay? And when we got through, the Lord closed the sea. And that's why you're seeing those Egyptian chariots down there to this day. And you can't debunk and say, well, that probably happened a couple years ago. No, you look at the coral that grew around, that been down there for thousands of years. Okay? So, let's sit on that. Um, verse 4, By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, and by which he obtained witnesses that he was righteous. Yahweh testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaketh by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was found because Yahweh had translated him for before his translation, he had a, this testimony that he pleased Yahweh and this is his faith that he had in the Lord. OK, and when it says translated, he basically got it beamed up into a chariot. OK, and the reason why this is there, because we going to get the same thing. We go, we going to get beamed up into a chariot. Okay, some of us never going. Some of us are not going to taste death, you know. As Yahushua spoke about, some of us might taste death just for the truth's sake. Okay, verse six. But f without faith, is it impossible to please him? For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, and you know what does Yahweh's name stand for? He exists. He is what he is. Okay. You know, you got to believe that the Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai exists. Okay. That's why it says that he, he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is. Okay. You got to believe he is this. Okay. Just simply just off his works alone, man. Okay. And just off the Lord's words alone, you know. And you will see like how the Lord cover every single spectrum of things we go through in life within the scriptures, man. Okay. It ain't nothing that the Lord had put in the scriptures that's missed out. Okay. The Lord spoke about everything. The Lord covered everything. And when we read those things, we were like, hmm. And that should boost your faith. Okay. So let's sit on that. Right. Let's sit on that. Now let's get the next precept. Um, Matthew 17. Let's get the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse um, 20. And the reason it says, and Yahweh, I'm going to start at verse 19. Then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai apart and said, why could, why could we, why could not we cast them out? And Yahweh Shai said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have a have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Right. And if you have that faith of the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, okay? What's one way we are spiritually moving a mountain, okay? Esau, a mountain in the scriptures is known as some is metaphorically known as a government, a mountain. Okay, whose mountain have we moved? Okay, Esau, Edom. Because when you go into the scriptures, okay, okay, so when you read Ezekiel thirty-five and verse two, 
Okay. We'll start at verse 1. And it says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it. And say unto it, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. Okay. And what is Mount Seir? It's talking about these Edomites, the so called white race. Okay. And when you go back to that Matthew 17, all right, Matthew 17 and 20, it says, And Yahweh shall say unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as the grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Right. We move this devil's mountain just simply us having faith in Yahweh by Shimei Abishai's word, man. Okay. We we go through these scriptures and this devil mountain is getting cut. Okay. He is getting cut to the heart because what we are bringing out is factual information. Okay. And it's all thus saith the Lord. Okay. It ain't nothing this devil can do to basically try to prevent what the Lord has planned for you devils. Okay. Because really, you know, the Lord got you in a trick bag. But at the same time, we have the faith that the Lord is going to take you devils down, man. And that's why when we go through these scriptures, you know, y'all get cut to the heart because everything we bringing out is true. Okay. We go into the history of you devils going all the way back to uh, Adam and Eve when you was the serpent in the garden to Cain and then to Esau. OK, you you have a historic record, you know, ever since the beginning. OK, and we have faith that you are the devil that the Bible speaks of. OK, because your actions lined up with what the scriptures say all about you people. OK. But once again, you know, if you just have that faith, the size of a mustard seed, you can move things. OK, you can do more. OK, just like we just look at a mustard tree. A mustard tree is, is massive, man, okay? Just that little faith alone is a bigger image or something bigger in the background, okay? Just that little faith, is it, it, it holds a lot more weight than you think, okay? And that's all the Lord asks of you, okay? Just that faith alone, man, all right? All right, let's sit on that. Let's get the book of Luke. Chapter, what I say, Luke chapter 8, verse 43. And now this is a count, you know, of having faith, okay? I'm going to start at verse 1, okay? This might be a little lengthy, okay? No, I'm going to start at verse 41, so like you. So, it says, "Be and behold, there came a man named Jarius. He was a ruler of... Of the synagogue, and he fell down at Yahushua's feet and besought him that he would come into the, his house, for he had one only daughter about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. But as he went, the people thrown him. A woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent her, all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed in any. You know, so this woman right here, she basically spent most of her money. You know, going to these different doctors, that's what a physician is, a doctor, you know, to get her issue of blood cured, okay? And came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stashed, meaning her issue that she was having had stopped immediately, okay? And Yahweh said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master. The multitude thrown thee, press thee, and sayest thou who touched me. Basically saying, you know, like everybody up here touching you, Yahweh Shai. What do you mean who touched you? You know? But what Yahweh Shai is, 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 is finna explain, it says, verse 46, And Yahweh Shai says, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive the, that, that virtue is going out of me. Okay? Verse 47, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and now and how she was healed immediately. And she and he said unto her, daughter, 
Be good comfort. Be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Okay. So this woman right here had faith that if she just touched Yahweh's garment, okay, if she just touched the garment, just touched the border of his garment, okay, she did that just having that faith and she was healed because her faith was so powerful at that moment that Yahweh felt that, okay, you know, because she had that much faith in Yahweh to deliver her out of her disease, out of her said pearl. What does Yahweh Shah name stand for? It's to deliver, okay? And we gotta have faith that Yahweh Shai is going to work miracles through the Father Yahweh, man. Okay? Just off Yahweh Shai coming back to redeem us, that, that right there is a powerful act, man. Okay? That right there is a powerful act within itself, okay? So that's why, once again, just, just the size of a mustard seed, and you just have a faith, the Lord would deliver you out of sad situations, man. You know? You got you to gotta have faith in the Lord, man. You got to have faith in the Lord, you know? Because if you don't have faith, okay? Let me go ahead and get it. The second address. Let's lock you. Second address, 14. No, 15. The second answer is chapter 15 and verse 2. I'm going to start at verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Okay, once again, everything that we read, everything we see within us that's happening in our lives, the miracles that the Lord w works, okay, are faithful and true. If the Lord spoke about it, it's going to happen in the scriptures. Hey, it's faithful and true, and it's going to come to pass, thus saith the Lord, at the end of the day. Okay, because the Lord rules over everything. Yahweh rules over everything, and he gave his only begotten son the power to rule over everything as well. Okay? And that was, those, those things are faithful and true. Verse 3, fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee, that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So if you lack in faith, okay, you got to pray to the Lord to give you faith, man. Okay, because you go into the book of James, okay. Book of James 1. James 1 and 5. And the reason it says, I'm going to start at verse um, 1. And it says, Yahweh Shai, I mean, James, a servant of Yahweh and of the Lord Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse, diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Let's read this in the NLT. And the reason it says, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, right? So when you go through situations, man, that's the Lord increasing your faith. You ask the Lord to increase your faith, and the Lord put you through something to help you build your faith up, man, okay? Because the Lord wants you to believe on him. Now, hey, did not the Lord say, cast all your cares upon me, okay? Cast all your cares upon him. The Lord will take care of thee, okay? Because um, I'm going to come back to this. Um, Proverbs 16, Proverbs 16 and verse three says, commit, I'm going to start a, uh, yeah, verse three, it says, commit thy works unto Yahweh and thy thoughts shall be established. Okay. So if you committing your ways unto the Lord, you casting all your care unto the Lord. Okay. The Lord will take care of thee. You know, the Lord will establish thee. Okay. Because this is what the Lord promised you. Okay. You commit thy ways that works to the Lord, the Lord will set you up, okay? He will establish you, man. He will make sure you are okay. But you got to have faith in the Lord to do those things for you. So now, going back to the James 1, okay, because once again, the things you're going through is a trial of your faith to increase your, it's the trial of your faith to increase your endurance, and when you have more endurance, you will have a stronger faith, okay? 
because you had uh, IUIC call us a faith-based camp, but then I, this is what the Lord wants you to have in him. It is faith, okay? Verse 4, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of you how would that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind toss. Okay? So you have to have faith in the Lord. And if you are lacking faith, ask the Lord. Okay? Because with faith comes wisdom. You will operate more better. Okay? You will let the Lord take care of things instead of you trying to take care of things. Because the Lord will let you try to take care of it and you will learn your lesson. Okay? So, once again, look, Yahweh by Shaniyahu should I take care of everything. And if you're lacking wisdom and lacking faith, ask the Lord for more faith. It, said, it clearly says the Lord not going to upbraid it from you. What's that word? Upbraid it means withhold it from you if you sincerely need it. The Lord wants you to pray to him, man. Simple. The Lord wants you to pray to him. The Lord want to give you things, give you blessings. But you got to, you, you can't block your blessings. By not having, you, you block your blessings by not having faith and not committing thy ways to the Lord, you know? So, that's it on that. Let's get the book of 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. And the reason it says right here. And it said, I'm going to start at verse 6. It says, therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Okay, and they'll teach this. And the reason it says, so we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. We're right? We're not in the spiritual realm with the Lord right now. We are not present with the Lord. Okay, but once again, we have the faith that Yahweh Shemiah Shah is guiding us through this walk. Okay, even though we're not by his side, the Lord is still guiding us through this walk because we what verse seven for we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, and the prime example is that is the book of Eli movie. You notice that Denzel Washington character, character was blind. Okay, so he was just walking simply just off faith. Okay, he's walking simply off faith. Okay, and not by sight. And that's just a spiritual message just to put it out there. Like, you know, you got to walk by faith. Let the Lord guide your steps. The, you, the prayer of David, guide my, guide my steps, you know. Guide my steps, you know. So, Khan, this has been this lesson. Lord, one is edifying to those that me watch. Give it all glory and all infinite praises due to Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Till next time, till next video. Shalom. Come on, Shalom. I'm by the ball.